Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. I get back to it. All right, go ahead. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I don't do it every day, but I do it every other day. Yeah. My routine is every other day. When I was in a wheelchair and I had quad surgery, I went in, into the gym every day. I took a walker and I did upper body every day. I had to do it for six weeks. I couldn't do legs. My upper, upper body grew. Even though I did it every day, I didn't do a whole lot, but it was enough to, to inspire um, development. Yeah. Now, my theory is is that, and I've heard this for years, and I've seen it for years, mechanics that work on cars back in the day, they didn't have machines. They had hands. They used their pliers, and they used their wrenches. Right. They had the biggest forearms in the world right. and because then, they were using their hands. Did every, they do it every day? Every day. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's right. It's the same principle with the weight. You know, you don't have to go tons and tons of weight, but a moderate weight every day. Yeah. For example, if you do chest and back on one day, and you just want to throw in a couple of sets of buys and tries that day, it doesn't take a lot. Just a few sets. Then three sets. Yeah. Three sets of bicep, three set. You could do super sets, which would be, would, right. would be great. Right. A set of buy, a set of try, a set of buy, a set of try. Back right. and forth. That's right. And don't count that as an arm day. No, not an arm day. I, oh. It's a supplement. You go back on arm day or shoulder and arm yep. day and you do it, and then maybe you just throw three sets of chest, three sets of back in. Yeah. Because that's a supplement again. If you go on leg day, you can do the same sort of thing. And then, of course, you do take a day off and on, and you have to have a rest day. But that can also uh, promote a lot of muscle growth. Yep. It stimulates the blood into the muscle and pumps it. Yep. Because you've got to remember that when you're young, the muscle gets pumped with blood easily. As you get older, it don't. Yeah. Now, if you train it more often, it's better because whatever goes in there goes in there often. It isn't that it goes in there once a week. Once a week is not going to cut it anymore. No. That's it. That leads me to this. <laughs> it's completely opposite thing. But when you're young and you have a lot of blood into the muscle and, then, and you're a sexually active guy at 16, you have no trouble getting a pump. Right. As you get older and things change, you have to have the Viagra and things to help you get that additional pump because right. it, blood's not going where you want it to go. Right. It's the same principle. Same thing. Same thing. That's right. And you've is. never heard that before except yeah. on Rick's Corner. <laughs> That's right. There you go. But it's a, it's a fact. It's definitely yeah. a fact. Yeah. yeah. And you know something, though? <clears throat> the, the people out there, if they have an opinion, yeah. they should write you. Absolutely. And let you know. That Absolutely. would be very good. And, 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 and if it would be all right with Rick, I would answer if you'd want me to or Rick to. Yeah. You, you know, throw us your opinion on what you think what we're saying. It will be good feedback. Yeah. We'll take I would the like feedback. That idea. The, the other thing I tried once, and I, I, I asked my doctor about this because Viagra and Cialis are uh, vasodilators, they throw blood into your muscle. Right. That's why you're able to get an erection when you take it, but it throws it through the whole body. So I took some Cialis for a week, and I'd take it right before I went to the gym. And I got a tremendous pump. Sure. Because the blood was dilating into the muscle. That's right. And then I heard later on that people were trying that because it was, it was helping through their workouts. So that's another thing that might possibly work. I know it sounds strange, but I asked my doctor, and he said, that is a fact. It definitely would help. Yep. What was the thing that we, what, what we used that made you itch? Oh, niacin. Niacin. There it is. The master. Niacin. Niacin wasn't made for bodybuilders. Bodybuilders took a little niacin before they went to the gym and they'd go... Oh, it gives you like a rest. Little itch. Yeah. Yeah. Made you break out a little bit. And but, but it gave you a rush. Yeah. It gave you a rush of the pump. It made the blood flow f for some reason. Nobody even knew how. Why? Who knew how, who stumbled on it? Nobody till this day. I don't know. Well, niacin is a basal dilator too. It, it dilates the, the capillaries. Is that what it is? That's why it itches. Well, it worked. Yeah, it, it worked. worked. Yes, it did. Um, yes, and it they did. take it before they go in the sun to help them tan. Oh that's yes. It. Oh yeah. And niacin is cheap. You can buy it like a, a, for five dollars a bottle. Any pharmacy has it. It's not a prescription drug. You know what else you told me years ago? You told me that antibiotics. When you take them, stay away from the sun. Yeah. Because you told me that you took them once and you went in the sun. Yeah. Because you were a sun worshiper for years. I was. And you know what? You got like a lobster. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Antibiotics. Now, make, why? Why is Because that? antibiotics make your skin photosensitive to the sun. And they say even if you go to a tanning bed, they'll have things you can't take when you lay in there. And one of them is antibiotics. Um, 
Tetracycline was, was the one yeah. actually. Tetracycline that yeah. people use for skin or maybe a slight infection or, a, or maybe a sinus infection. But it enhances the sun the sun's rays on you and makes you burn. Yep. And yep. It, it works. Yep. yep. So I mean, don't go do it. It's not really not necessary, but it definitely did that thing. Okay. Um, I was going to try and get a hold of several of the guys from the 70s that I've been asked to many, many times, but there's not many around. You mean because they're not with us anymore? They're not or with they us moved any away? Well, they're not with us. You have to make us. yourself a little more, uh, where are they? What do you mean where? Well, for example, uh, they're not with us. Some aren't with us anymore. We okay. know that for okay. a fact. Go ahead. Uh, I tried to get like Don Holworth. Donnie Holworth. I tried to get Chet Yorton, who said he would come on. Um, Chuck Faust said he would come, and he will, but he's out Charlie of town. Charlie Faust? Yeah. Yes. Now, the problem with some of them is they don't want to be seen anymore because they're not in the shape they were, and they, they feel okay. a little bit bad okay. about that. Yeah. Um, Don Horth, I really want to get, and I heard that he will do it, but he's a little reluctant to talk. Chet said he would. Uh, he lives up by me. I just have to pin him down. Is it just a, uh, involved with something with uh, with a protein bar or something? I think he's involved with something. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah. All right. But I had Boyer Co on last week, and Boyer is 64 in tremendous shape. Is he, he, is he a wonderful, good? Yeah, wonderful oh, attitude. Great, just great. a great guy. Great. But um, I would so, love to get Arnold. Yeah. So some don't want to get in front of the camera because no. so it all boils down to vanity. Yeah. Vanity, right? For example, Reg Lewis. Yeah. Reg Lewis was in awesome shape. He was. Oh, he, I, well, I remember that name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've entered a lot of Brooklyn Academy of Music. Reg Lewis, Mr. America. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we entered it. Oh yeah, a lot of shows together. He was. He played in a lot of films. He and was married, or he had a girlfriend. She was in bodybuilding. Sherry. Show. Sherry what? Lewis. Lewis. That's yeah. right. Right. Remember? Well, I see Reg over at my shopping mall, and this guy had, was always had a tiny, tiny waist. He must be well, close to two hundred eighty pounds now, completely out of shape. We talk a lot, and he says, "I just don't want to be seen like this anymore." He just has a tremendous appetite. And yeah, and you know what though. Uh, that's he was honest with you. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. At least he told you how he felt. He wasn't comfortable with a camera on him for people to, to look the way he looked. And uh, yeah, and that's it. You have to you have to understand. No, I respect that. He just has a tremendous that. amount of knowledge about training, which I thought would be good. But so do you. And and um, the training methods that we had back then, I think they're superior to the ones that we have now. I see trainers in the gym, and they're they're training people for fitness, and they have them work with a ball. We never worked with a ball. We didn't have treadmills. We didn't have life cycles. We didn't did we trained. And if we had any cardio at all, it's maybe a quick run on the beach, right? That's right. That's right. We didn't have the cardio that they have today. Right. We did not have, pardon my English, women in the gym. No. We go back before women. That's right. Think of that, guys, out there. It was a man's world. That's right. It was no <laughs> women. Imagine that. <laughs> Trying to do that today. Yeah. We'd all be in jail. But what I've said before, we had uh, one, two, we had two women for sure. We had Debbie, Debbie and the one with the big dog. Not, but we had Heidi. And Heidi. And then we had the tall with the rainbow hair and the big dog. <laughs> what was her name? I don't know. I don't, right. And I just remember that there was one dressing room and one shower. And I was up in the shower one day, and the one with the rainbow hair and the big dog came up there and turned around and said, would you mind handing me the soap? And she was showering. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, no one thought about that back then. It wasn't a big deal. And Joe didn't really want women in the gym. Because no. it was all about men training, That's right? All his buddies. Well, yeah, and a lot of women w w weren't really hooked on guys with muscles. No, they weren't. They weren't hooked on guys with muscles. That did not, in plain English, turn them on. It didn't. Right. It didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They thought the lumps and the bumps were just. No, we were considered freaks. Uh, bodybuilders yeah. were freaks. They had a bad reputation in Santa Very Monica. Bad. Being a, one was a child molester, and so that gave yeah. bodybuilding a bad name. Yeah. Uh, they weren't all like that, but they, they, they were some crazies. Because was, wasn't it a cult? It was a cult. It was a cult, almost yeah. like Harley Davis at one time was strictly a cult. Well, it's no different than being a professional wrestler. When I started that, I thought I was nuts. Why would you pick a profession like that? When right. You, could be you think that that wrestling had had a, a, a great reputation? No, no, no. It did. It was mainly for guys that didn't really, really want, to, want to go to work right. and wanted to get in the ring and get banged around, like a circus. Uh, circus performance. But I picked it because it was creative and my friends would say to me, why do you want to become a professional wrestler when you can stay here in Bakersfield and sell cars? Oh, I right. have a choice of selling cars or being on a stage and traveling and seeing the world. No. I think I'll take wrestling. Right, right. Wouldn't you say that boxing always had a little more class to the public than the wrestling? Well, there was a bigger Way purse, back, and, bigger and, and because of that, boxing was legit. Right. Wrestling was always considered a show and not real. That's right. Until you got into it, and I realized that a lot of the old-timers made it real because they didn't want you to be in the business, so they beat you up. 
Yeah. It hurt you yeah. purposely. Yeah. So, and a lot of people don't realize that. It's, it's, there's a lot of egos involved, like bodybuilding. Everybody wants to be on top, and there's only room for a few, and those guys coming up the ranks are going to get the hell knocked out of them until they get there because they don't want you to have it. You know, another thing we should be a little proud of, when we did bodybuilding years ago, like, he, like we both agreed, it was sort of a cult. It was a close-knit family that got together and did this. Other sports didn't do it. If you were a baseball player or football player, wrestlers did it, but uh, uh, other sports didn't do it. Boxers didn't. They, they did other stuff. But all of a sudden now, if you look at all the sports out there, everybody does it. Yeah. The other sports do what we did to make them their sport look better. Because baseball guys today all lift iron. Football all lift iron. Boxers all do iron. Basketball players all do iron. Basketball, if you did iron years ago and you wanted to play basketball, the coach would say, no, slow you down. Yeah. It'll make your muscles yeah. too big and you won't be able to be quick. All that went away. So what we did and what we preached went right down the tubes because everybody said that what we did wasn't the right thing to do. It wasn't even healthy. Right. Doctors told my mother that I shouldn't lift iron because it would give me an enlarged heart, they said, and it wouldn't be good for me. Because it would make you short. Healthy. And it would make me short. And I'm not short. I'm very tall. <laughs> and then, <it's>, uh, <laughs> but, but all of a sudden now, I'm proud of this thing because now look at what guys do. Everybody's lifting iron. Then it went to the women. They got hooked on it. Now look how many women lift, lift iron. Yeah, everybody. Look at the women that touch iron. The thing, the thing is, is that it did go into sports and it went into baseball. And of course, Barry Bonds had been on the carpet for taking steroids. Yes. And now they're they're taking him back to court because he, apparently he lied about taking steroids, which I think is the most ridiculous thing in the world to even talk about because you have these earthquakes, you have world wars, you have the Middle East, and you have oil prices and gas prices, and they're worried about a man lying about taking steroids. Big deal. My well, God. Right. Let's solve the world's problems. Why make such a big deal? Why well, makes right, a big deal? Right. He All hurt no one. News. He did nothing. He didn't hurt anybody. No. But but look at the entertainment he did. Look what he did. Yeah. And did they ever think of that? Come on. Yeah. Right. I just heard this on the news. And Maybe it's again. better the Babe Ruth era where he was a, 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 a skirt chaser. Uh, he was a womanizer, and he smoked cigars constantly and drank. Maybe that was better. Because yeah. he didn't take steroids. But look what the other things he did. Nobody says anything bought wrong. Nobody brought him up on charges for smoking. In fact, in fact, when we were training back there in the 70s, steroids were legal. They weren't illegal. We didn't have to... Right. It was, what, it was easy to get. Yeah. Right. It, it wasn't until the government started saying, well, there's a lot of this floating around. We need to make money on it. Let's yes. make it illegal. Yeah. We can get fines. We can get taxes. We can get all this kind of stuff. And that's what caused the whole thing. Yeah. And, and uh, the steroids back then weren't as plentiful as they were now. I mean, they were basic things. But the bodies were better. I've had several people say, and even Boyer said, you could take all the guys from our era, line them on stage, and put masks on them, but you know whose body is because they're all different. Right. They're clones. Today they're clones. They're clones. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code Grayson12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey everyone, now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Grayson personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it and I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrayson.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.